Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Code Lab on Tinker Live. This is the show that helps students and teachers create and make with Tinker Code. Uh, and I am very excited. This is our fifth day, our fifth and final day of uh, Computer Science Education Week here at Tinker, uh, the fifth and final day of Code Lab. Uh, but remember, you can always have an hour of code with Tinker anytime. It doesn't just have to be uh, today. Uh, it can be any time. So um, uh, there are what 50 plus activities on, on Hour of Code on Tinker. So, uh, and right now there are hundreds of kids watching today from all around the world, uh, thousands even. Uh, we have so much to look forward to in the next 45 minutes. So what are we going uh, to do today? Today, we are going to be visited uh, by a very special NASA guest uh, because they're gonna help us with our Earth as Art project. Uh, so in a moment, we'll be visited by Lori Perkins, a data visualizer uh, from the NASA Goddard Space Center. Uh, then we're going to be doing the Earth as Art project. Uh, actually, what uh, we're going to learn a lot about Landsat imagery and data visualization from Lori, and she's going to help inform us on our Earth as Art project. And it's going to be just ex amazingly exciting. So I hope uh, you all uh, are ready to get your coding uh, fingers ready. Now, this is a little bit more of an advanced project, but like with all you know things Tinker, dive in. If you haven't tried uh, Python before, then give it a try. See how it goes. Uh, this project is designed for beginners too. So uh, you can kind of play around in there. You can hack away. And uh, our, our, our educator, our Tinker educator, who's going to be on a little bit later, is going to help us and uh, kind of show you uh, how to do this project. So uh, we are also going to be doing a uh, Q&A. So I'm putting this up here now because you have a NASA Goddard Center of Data Visualization Specialist uh, who you have, you could ask some great questions about satellites, satellite imagery, the Landsat imagery, use your de mobile device. If you have one, use the QR code and start filling out the Q&A with some great questions uh, about that. We learn a lot from these images and uh, you know we get to see our beautiful planet through these satellite images and, and there's a lot of data that we uh, pick up from those as well. So uh, for everyone that does a project today, you're going to get this great certificate of achievement. We want to see those certificates, so hold them high. It's got the little NASA guy down there, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Who am I? I'm Daniel Rizak. I'm uh, Mr. Rizak, senior lead here at Tinker. I'm also a STEM, a STEM and science teacher, uh, and uh, former and uh, former tech director and, and uh, STEM coordinator for school districts uh, around here in Illinois. That's where I'm from. Uh, so if you are an educator and you want to bring in some of your your colleagues, you can share this with your personal learning network. Uh, tweet it out. Let everybody know we're live. We want to bring everybody in and uh, um, learn from NASA and learn uh, from this great project that we're about to do. So here's a little uh, agenda for today. We're going to get to know our guest. We're going to uh, learn a little bit about what we're going to be doing with our project. Then we're going to create that project uh, and we'll have some time for questions and answers. So are you ready to create together? All right, let's do this. We're going to get started. I need to get everybody on the same page. Where is this project? This project uh, is at tinker.com. So we're going to go to tinker.com. We're going to log in students. And uh, so you'll see a little uh, modal that you can uh, click on right there for student. And then you're going to have a couple choices. You can log in with your username, a Google uh, username, or a Microsoft username, or you can log in with the Smart Pass. That's a nice way to do it, uh, QR code. Then you're going to go to your classes. You go to your classes there. We have placed all of the Hour of Code projects in a nice folder for you, the NASA Hour of Code projects. Click on that folder, and then you're going to click on Earth as Art. Uh, you'll be ready to do the project. Just stay right there uh, until, uh, until uh, we're done teaching you all about the Landsat uh, piece of things. Now, if you also, now if you don't have a classroom, somehow you got to tinker.com, you can go to tinker.com slash NASA, and you can just click on Earth as Art there, uh, and that'll get you in just as well. So, uh, so uh, without much further ado, uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Miss Lori Perkins, uh, and Lori is a data visualization uh 
data visualizer for the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Um, and uh, she creates data visualizations and animations that showcase NASA research and missions. So using data to create you know, visualizations. This is a, she's going to explain all this to, to you. So, cause I'm probably not going to do the best job on that, but um, this uses the same hardware and software that our science teams use to process data and similar software that the entertainment industry might use to create feature films. So that's pretty cool. Right. Uh, so uh, this is really exciting. So everybody welcome uh, Lori Perkins to code lab. All right. Hello, are we, are we there? Do we lose someone? Checking, we're checking. Hey, Miss McGriff, can you, uh, can you jump on? I sure can. Hey, how are you? Hi. Um, I think Lori's checking on her audio and video. Just uh, it looks like she may have had to re-enter. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, if we had to. Oh, there we go. She's coming back. I see it. No problem. We have, you know, this is technology. We're we're all in remote places. You know, there's uh, <laughs> we're all trying to figure it out. So um, uh, it looks like she is rebooting uh, and getting back in there, but. Uh, if there was a problem, I would just say, hey, why don't you uh, jump into the project and then we can kind of backtrack. But uh, I think we're, uh, I think we're getting there. So um, let's give her one more second. Uh, I think I hear something. Sounds good. All right. How are we doing? Oh, no. Hmm. We are checking one more time, checking one, two, three. All right. There we go. All right, I have audio. There we are. Hi there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay, stuff happens. I was just kind of letting everyone know you know, we're all working remotely. We're all in different places and, you know, stuff happens. I was going to start singing maybe, you know, and showing <laughs> off my old, uh, you know, baritone, but uh, I think we're good. So everybody welcome uh, Lori Perkins, data visualization uh, specialist or uh, guru from, uh, from NASA. So uh, why don't you help us and uh, at least get us a little updated on what you've been working on recently. I know there's this huge launch that's going to happen soon in a couple of months, but uh, uh, why don't you kind of give us a little background? Uh, we know you're creating cool visualizations and, and what goes into that and what, what have you been up to? So what I've been doing mostly, I mean, NASA is very excited. NASA has had, I believe, five launches this year. Um, and we're really excited for a new launch of, of the largest telescope that's ever been put into space, um, which is, is so cool. It's called the James Webb Space Telescope, and that should be launching later on this year. But what I have been doing is uh, I do a lot of Earth science data. And so um, I actually did a lot of work in preparation for the climate meeting that happened in Glasgow, Scotland, this past year, and a lot of Landsat uh, imagery was was shown there. So I'm happy right. to show some of that. Oh, that's um, great. No, that'll be yeah, wonderful. I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah, no, that's very relevant. Um, no, so uh, with that, um, I'm gonna share my screen here uh, and go to the right place. Uh, we kind of had a guiding question too, and we can kind of um, uh, work that into um, uh, what you've been up to, but I think what we want to know before we get into our project and with you, with your expertise is what we learn from this imagery and how does this help NASA with Artemis and, and I guess with, you know, with Glasgow, uh, climate meetings. Uh, so, um, I'll go ahead and, uh, and, uh, get you moving here. Excellent. 
Yeah, we learned a lot from Landsat data. We one of the things we learned is that the the planet is is beautiful and um, and it changes. Um, we we currently have um, and if you go to the next one, that's just saying where I'm from. Um, and if you can play it, it's a movie. Um, this oh, cool. is this is showing um, the 24 different spacecrafts that NASA has that are at low Earth orbit. Um, currently observing different elements of our planet um, every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, these satellites are taking different um, different um, measurements. They're all scientific instruments in space. And so some are looking at things that, that happen in our atmosphere. Um, some are looking at things that happen in our ocean. Some are looking at things that happen on our land. Um, but together, we pull all this data together um, so we can understand the Earth as a system. Um, and two of these satellites that you see here are called Landsat. And so if you go to the next slide. I can do that. You can see that Landsat has been around um, since I was a little girl. <laughs> uh, it's been around for um, uh, since um, 1972. Um, and so this is, it's an exciting time um, because it, it, we've taken over that time, um, well, uh, in 2017, we had taken 7 million different um, scenes of, of data. Um, and so now it's way more than that. It's probably now at like 9 million. Oh, wow. um, but um, what that means is you can go back and see how our planet has changed in that time period. Um, and so I thought I'd show you how a satellite works. So if you go to the next slide, you can see um, what you're gonna see now is um, a satellite. And that satellite we actually took from the engineering models of the people that built the satellite. So we, we pulled that into our visualization tool and we used it to show just the area, it's called a swath that sure. the satellite sees. And wow. so the satellite doesn't take a big picture all at one time. It, it goes around in small pieces and you see just a little swath of data. Um, and so over the satellite is rotating around the planet and then the planet is sort of, um, the, the planet uh, orbits it is, is rotating underneath a bit. And mm -hmm. so, over the course of 16 days, you'll see the whole planet. Only 16 um, days? I would have thought that would have been like two years. <laughs> nope, it takes 16 days. But that doesn't really help if I want to see something like if I want to see how things have changed, like from a natural disaster, from a large event, like a landslide or a major hurricane or some kind of, if we want to be able to help people um, respond to something, so NASA has two Landsat data sets out there. So, and they're, they're on opposite ends of the planet. So, if, so we can actually see the full world every eight days because we have two satellites up. Um, nice. But we worked with the Europeans because no scientist does anything all by themselves. Like if you are the kind of person where you're just getting into group projects, Mm -hmm. All real science is a group project. Um, you collaborate. It's we have to collaborate, and so we collaborate with our partners at the European Space Agency. They have a satellite program called the Sentinel Program, and there's two very similar projects to Landsat um, that were inspired by the Landsat program. And so, if we combine the Landsat work with the Landsat data, with the European data, we can get that down to every two days. So that means wow. if there's a large event that happens, your, um, your uh, emergency responders can look and see what did the forest look like before the fire? Right, what right. does it look like now? Um, and this is, the Landsat data is used by, um, by um, emergency managers, it's used by for planning purposes, mm -hmm. it's used by the insurance agency, um, the police use that kind of stuff, it's used for water management, it's mm -hmm. used to help with water safety, um, it's used to understand our climate. 
Um, wow. And is, is a lot of this data just out in the open free that uh, people can use and, and dig into or? Well, that's a great, uh, that's great. Yes, 100% of the Landsat data is free. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see that not only is it free, but when I first started um, at NASA, it wasn't free. It was $600 per scene. And oh, so wow. for um, a scene of data is about um, 115 um, miles long, where each pixel of that data is about a baseball field's length. So a scene would be like if you're the distance between maybe Washington, D.C. and Richmond or mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco and say um, um, uh, Sacramento, that's the distance of, of one scene. But it used to cost $600. Now that's free. And and it's easy for you too, because Google and Amazon and a lot of the cloud producers have brought all that data into, um, into their cloud processing. So you no longer, if you wanted to do a project at your school with Landsat, all you'd have to do is bring up a web browser. And so that's what this is right here. This is the Google Earth Engine free tool that mm -hmm. um, anybody can use. Google makes it available. Um, and what you're seeing underneath is, is Landsat data um, over the course of, um, some, from I think this is from 1984 to the present day. Um, and and it's, it's, so it's Landsat data from multiple satellites of the Las Vegas area. Hmm. And if you, if you go to the next page, you'll see the actual code. Any one of you can use this. And then this, what this does is this first line is it says, I want to see how this area under that polygon, under that, that um, rectangle where I had the four vertices, and I want to grab all the Landsat 5 data um, where the cloud cover, where there's less than 25% clouds. And then I want to grab, because Landsat 5 was, um, that was in like the 80s. And then Landsat 7, that was in um, the 90s. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the same thing. And Landsat data is not a camera. It's a, it's, a, an, it's a scientific instrument. So there's seven bands of Landsat data. So what I'm saying is I'd like to select bands four, three, and two. When you combine them like that, it looks like an image. It's a colorful image. So it looks like green is... Um, it, it, it's what we call true color. And then Landsat 8 is data from um, like 2000. Um, I think Landsat 8 launched in like 2012 or 13, something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and so then you can you always select bands four, three and two because I want an image. And then I'm going to merge all of that data together so I can see how things changed from 1984 to 2021, and you go to the next code. Um, so then you pull all this together, and uh, in order to visualize it, you say, Google provides a tool, and it's called Visualize the Collection. Hmm. So you say, I want to map it, and hmm. I want to visualize it. Um, and and you say um, here there's a minimum so the value is um, the value is is how much light reflects so it's 200 to 4,000 uh, sure. but you can have all this code you can put this code into the code and then you say please output a movie and if you go to the next slide you'll see what this code does and so and you can play the movie so this oh, is nice. Las Vegas. And this is the, the lake here is called Lake Mead mm -hmm. and the city is Las Vegas. So, and you can keep, you can play it again. Um, so as the city grows, the lake shrinks. Um, the lake is not necessarily shrinking because they're pulling water for the city, though they are. Sure. The lake is shrinking because it's, you're getting a lot less water because um, we're having some, the, the amount of water that's hitting Vegas is, is less than it used to be. Um, we're getting, you know, less snow in the regions. Less, less. It's just much drier in mm -hmm. this region um, now than it was before. So this is just something you can see from the land. And if you wanted to see what your 
what your neighborhood looked like, you could use this same code, but draw a different polygon um, over that area. And, and then you could see this is what Vegas looks like over the past since 1984. But you could see what your neighborhood looked like. As soon as I showed this to the head, the lead scientist for NASA, he said, I grew up in Switzerland. Make this for me for Switzerland. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can do it. Anybody can do it. The code is totally free. Um, the data is, you're, you don't have to bring the data down. You don't have to pay anything. You can use Google's computer resources, which are much more extensive than any school has. Sure. Um, and NASA's data, um, and you just, um, you pull it together and all you download is the movie. Well, this is, um, honestly, this is wonderful. I would, if yeah, I would do this with my, you know, with my child, with my class, with my students, it seems like this is a great class project. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited about this. Um, and actually with that, uh, why don't we uh, take that and um, take these ideas and combine them to create something that we've, uh, that we've done. Uh, and we're gonna bring in our, uh, I asked this question because we're basically going to take these Landsat images and we're going to make something totally unique and wonderful out of them uh, with our Earth as Art project. Uh, but I think I'm sure all of our students right now have even more questions that they want to ask. So uh, definitely use that uh, Q&A form. But uh, I would like to bring in um, our education uh, community specialist, Leandra McGriff. Uh, and uh, we, we waved at her for a minute uh, in the beginning there, but uh, welcome. Uh, so are you, why don't you take us through Earth as Art? Uh, Leandra is a former you know, English teacher and, and computer science teacher, a lot of great knowledge uh, of, um, of all these things and tinker, but I'll stop sharing and uh, you can walk us through. Absolutely, thanks, Dan. Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Let's go ahead and look at our Earth as Art project. So I'm gonna start by sharing my screen here. And let's take a look and see what we have. So we're going to start by looking at our example. And as we can see, the computer is recreating this image in a pointillism art style. And so our job is to enter code that tells the computer to do this from scratch. All right. And so we will be using processing.py to create our very own pointillism style painting. And we're just gonna hop into the main.py um, file here in the editor and we'll get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is import our library. Now remember a library is like a toolbox with all of the code or tools that we need to be able to do amazing things. So I'm gonna go ahead and import our library from processing import. All right, and now what I can do is I can click on the code transfer button, I call it that, because it allows us to transfer code from the tutorial directly into the editor. So if you're new to coding, this is a really great tool because all you have to do is follow along and make sure that you understand the code that you're using. The code is already written for you. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to change this to, I'm going to change it to 15. This is the size of our points. So this first line of code here defines the size of our points, what our points are going to be. And then our second line of code here is the size of our canvas. And just like in real life, artists paint on a canvas, in the computer world, we can create the size of the canvas that we would like to paint on. So let's go ahead and do that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the setup function. And the setup function runs once at the start of the program and performs any code that we put into it. So here I am loading up the image and if I hover over it, I can see the image that's there, but I'm going to change the image to image three. And what's really neat is that you can import your own images into the file here, and you can upload your own images that you can use to create your very own pointillism style painting. 
And so we're going to set our background to zero and I'm going to use no smooth and no stroke. And this is so that our little dots don't have any outlines around them. That way it will look like they're all blending in together. And so that's the way that we are going to do it now. And later I will actually delete this code so we can see what happens if we don't have this code here. But for right now, we're going to keep it there. And then we are going to go ahead. And now that we have this code, it's time to actually start painting. So our computer knows what it's going to be painting. So now we're going to start painting. So let's go ahead and with this line of code, we're going to tell the computer to put our image in the upper left-hand corner. And now we are going to pick a random point on our image. So we're just gonna pick a point and we can see the word random here, which indicates that we're going to pick a random point. And then we are going to retrieve a color from that specified pixel. And so we have the X and Y coordinates here, and then it's gonna go into the C value. And so we are going to pick a color and um, then we are going to paint that color. And that's gonna be our last block of code. And we're going to paint it on the same spot, but we're going to have it offset a little to the right so that our computer is not going to be painting over the same image, but rather to paint beside it and paint all of these little dots one by one there. And so let's go ahead and run this code and see it in action. I'm going to press play. And there we have it. We have our code. It's working. We have our image being recreated in this pointillism style. Really neat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this ellipse to a rectangle. And so it's going to be rectangles instead of circles. So let's see what happens there. And this is really cool. We changed it to squares. And what I can also do is I can um, take off the no smooth, no stroke. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and see what happens there. And so we actually have little outlines around them and it's not bleeding together. So we see that every line of code that we type is very, very important in order to get our um, the style of painting that we want. So this is our pointillism style painting. This is Earth as art. That's wonderful. And uh, I am I am hoping everyone is inspired to go and 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 just hack away and create the most unique type of artwork. I'm thinking, you know, if, if anybody's been paying attention to these NFT things, you know, you're basically creating artwork that will be truly unique in your own. It'll be, there's nobody using code. You're basically creating something that can't be, uh, that won't be duplicated or replicated. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but thank you, Leandra. Thanks for, uh, uh, thank for sharing so that with us. Now, um, Miss uh, Perkins, I'm going to ask you to come back because uh, you shared with us before, uh, or you shared with me before, some resources, and I want to make sure that we uh, we share these with our group here. Um, but uh, I'm going to put this on screen first so that everybody can see where to go. Uh, so I'm going to do a little camera switching here. But um, I've made a short link for this great resource. It's called Where in the World. Uh, you can go to go tinker slash where in the world. And I'm then now going to switch over to this uh, this resource because it's really cool. By the way, you can pause the video, you know, and then you can play. So if you need to write that down, just pause. Uh, but let us go to where in the world. And, and hopefully you can uh, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, I think it's kind of a game. Um, and so here it is. What is uh, what is this exactly? So this is a game just to get people interested, to get uh, students interested in understanding the planet. So if you type in your name there, or any name of any of the students that are here, um, you can see that, uh, and that's an astronaut. Um, we've actually, I've actually met her. She's actually more famous because, um, because of, of, our, of her hair. <laughs> that uh, than she was. She said she gets way more credit because of her hair. Anyway, nice. so she's, she's fabulous. Um, so here's just some, uh, these are actual uh, images taken on the ISS, um, the International Space Station by, um, by uh, astronauts. 
So um, astronauts are trained in how to use like DSLR cameras. Is that true? <laughs> they, they actually are. And back in, in the uh, early time of astronauts, the training was very difficult for how to make a camera because you didn't now, students really have a hard time understanding now because all cameras or a lot of cameras that they see are point and shoot. That is right. not the way the cameras are um, on the um, on the space station. Um, but if you keep going, you're going to see some phenomenal um, um, imagery taken. So these are all these photograph photographs that are taken of the planet. And um, it's just really beautiful. So if you keep going, you can really explore different places. Um, and Where so they ask questions. Yeah, so they ask you, where is this? Now, this is where I live, so I know that. But you can see <laughs> there's the Washington Monument. And then, um, and so they say, very great. And so there's many, there's there's three different steps. There's 15 photog photographs that you can, that you can look at. You, once you answer the questions, so you can say, oh, well, where is this? Is this Mount Fuji? Is this Mount Key? Or is this Mount Hood? Um, and the answer is, dun, 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 you're correct. I think it's, it's that in Hawaii. one. Yep, that's there you go. correct. I've been there a couple of times. I've been near Mount Hood, but I've not been to uh, to the other mountain. I gotta, so I gotta it work will on give that. You a, it will give you a little hint if you're if you're not sure. Um, here, this one, um, hmm. uh, this is Lake Bai is one of the is one of the uh, biggest. No, don't push that one. It's one <laughs> of the um, sources of of fresh water. Does this look like water you want to drink? No. No. Uh, Emerald Lake. Does this look like Emerald Lake? No. So this is Laguna, Colorado in Bolivia. Wow. Okay. That must be copper, right? Um, uh, it, or algae. So Whoa. It, 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 it's landlocked. So there's all sorts of interesting things that you'll read when you, when you, that you'll understand when you really see the earth as a planet um, from the view of space. I want to do one uh, more of these. <laughs> the unique, it's, it's, it has a unique, uh, so where do you think this is? Is this Houston? Is mm -hmm. this Los Angeles? Or is this New York? Um, good question. I'm thinking. Um, these are called the nightlight. So this is what, this is what the, the planet looks like at night. Right. So I'm seeing this big gap that's some sort of bay, right? Uh, I'm yeah. not thinking this is not Los Angeles. No. Nope. Um, it is, uh, I don't know that, not I'm going to have to say New York, I think. That's correct. Yep, you're yeah. right. And I haven't done this before. I'm just uh, trying to make some uh, educated <laughs> guesses. Uh, this is fun. Yeah. I like this. So the planet looks a little bit different, and there's many different versions, of many different um uh, places you can see. This is a great way to, yeah. So this one is a place you might not have been to before. Yep. You can go It's South America or South Africa. I have not been there, but I have been to yep. Costa Rica. So, uh, but I don't know that I would have noticed that, known that anyway. <laughs> these, when you really, when you look at the planet from this kind of viewpoint, NASA has a real unique um, vantage point for Keep the, looking. for the planet. And it just, you always learn new things when you see when you see the planet um, from the view of the of space. That's wonderful. I like this resource a lot. Again, this is probably uh, you know in this week these are what you've shared are some of the best I think uh, you know learning resources we've seen yet. So this is uh, this is wonderful. Um, I have a few questions. I know that there's some questions from students, so I want to go ahead and move on to our Q and A. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, there's a few questions in there that I think uh, are pretty cool. Uh, again, students, if you want to ask a question in the last minute, I might I might find your question. Um, I like to do the last minute, but I want to give your school a shout out, of course. Uh, but uh, use the QR code, use the, the link, go tinker slash code lab Q. Uh, so we can uh, ask and answer your questions. Uh, but let's go with, uh, I think there's a couple of kind of simpler ones, maybe, I don't know, um, to start with. What would you say is like the, uh, what do we learn most by these Landsat images? And uh, you you already said, you know, that there's different layers and that these aren't, we're not actually taking pictures. And so clearly there's other data, right, that we're kind of compiling. 
Uh, but what, what do you think is the biggest benefit and, in in, you know, from all this uh, Landsat data? So you learn that our planet is, um, is not static. You learn that our planet is changing. And so sometimes it's changing from natural processes like the season. So you can absolutely see winter, spring, summer, and fall. And you can see that all over the planet. Um, but then you can see man-made changes as well. And so right next to each other, you can see things like um, harvesting of forests. Um, you can see, you can, and it, it, there, it's very obvious from space. You can see like the lumber industry, you can see the coal right. industry. So right next to each other on, the, on, on, right, on one Landsat scene, you can see a, um, you can see a natural process and a man-made process. Um, and so uh, the, the planet is not, is not the same as it was, um, you know, 50 years ago, as it was 100 years ago, as it was 100,000 years ago. Um, you, it's, it's really, and, and you kind of really, there's a lot, even people that have studied um, the planet for many years, you learn more things you learn more as you study it. So it's important that we keep an eye on what's going on on our planet so we can um, so we can make the best decisions in terms of, of responding to emergencies mm -hmm. or um, planning for for um, planning for, for the future uh, for the future. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Now you bring up a good point too. I think a lot of uh, the changes that we're seeing too, when you look, you know, are happening a lot faster than I think anybody thought or they would happen, uh, especially in the last uh, few years. Looking at, you know, you can always look at the. I'm sure if some student out there wants to look at the Landsat imagery for uh, the rainforests in South uh, America and do a little, you know, a little time lapse there, you're going to really be uh, uh, learn a lot because uh, I, I, that's kind of scary. Um, right. But yeah, this is uh, in, the, in yeah. the Amazon. In the Amazon, we are seeing for we are seeing forests where. Um, where the, the people down there are burning in order in order to provide um, agriculture, in order to provide us cheap bananas. Mm -hmm. They are burning um, areas of four of farms that are, you know, a hundred miles wide um, to, to provide us with, you know, cheaper agriculture, cheaper, cheaper food sources. So it used to be that the Amazon was one of the largest sources, uh, was the largest sinks of carbon. So that was one of the biggest areas where we pulled wow. carbon out of the planet. And that has changed because of uh, um, a lot of the deforestation in, in the Amazon. Okay, so I have a couple more here, uh, but let's, I'm gonna jump ahead to this one first. Do we have Landsat images or satellites orbiting Mars? So we have several satellites orbiting Mars. Uh, they're not called Landsat. Okay. Uh, but we do have, um, I think there are about, there we have several rovers, and then we have, I think, about five um, satellites orbiting Mars right now. Uh, we have the the latest is the the um, well, we have a, a we have a little helicopter, the Perseverance helicopter. Right, right. That's that, great. Uh, yeah, or ingenuity. No, I, I think yeah, the, the ingenuity, right? The little, uh, right. the little helicopter. Um, right. Uh, and I, I, I'm hearing sad uh, words that we may have to retire ingenuity soon, or or something like that. So, uh, but uh, a little helicopter is giving us a lot of great pictures. So that's right. great. Um, but I think you know, I know I, I, we we do see land, you know, images of of NASA, so uh, or of uh, Mars. So I think uh, it's curious where we're and getting And what we from. learned on our planet in, in, with the Landsat program helped us develop a, a satellite to orbit Mars to give us better. What we learned when we studied our planet helped us study other planets gotcha. like Mars and Jupiter, soon Venus. Um, we haven't been back to Venus since the 70s. 
Oh, wow. And yeah, I know that's, there's a classic image of Venus. Like, I think we landed something there or Russia did or something. And they took two pictures before the camera burned up uh, in the, under the Yeah, heat. it's 900 degrees um, <laughs> wow. on, on the surface of Venus. And so, yes, and uh, NASA actually um, worked with the Russian um, space station on that uh, mission. And we have not been back since. So we're going back with the Da Vinci mission. So I'm gonna go back. I'm kind of jumping a little around a little bit just to flow. Uh, but uh, so clearly we're, we're able to see some great imagery and we can compare and contrast. Is there like, you know, are we collecting infrared, you know, data, things like that uh, um, from these, uh, from these, uh, what, what, else, what other kind of data are we getting? Maybe students might be inspired to, you know, create a comparison chart or something like that. So one of my favorite types of data that we're getting now is called LIDAR data. Mm. Um, LIDAR data, it looks through the clouds and it actually can look through the forest. And so um, we, we can look, we can use that data to see, um, to see like the forest canopy, to see, to see, look at ice. So we can look to see how thick are the ice sheets on our planet. Um, we have a, a gravity data set um, that looks at uh, how gravity has changed because we've warmed the planet so much. Um, we've actually melted um, enough ice from our ice sheets that we've actually changed the weight and the balance of the mass of some of our ice sheets. And you can measure that because you can see small changes in the gravity field of our planet. Um, so we do take, we take data in infrared, we take microwave data. Um, mm -hmm. So when you, when you look at, uh, we take radar. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we do that to, to get better weather forecasts. Most people, when they, they look on their iPhone or their, or their Android device, they pull out, they get the weather information. What most people don't realize is the only weather information that you normally get that's taken on the ground is, is um, along populated regions. But a lot of that weather happens in the oceans as well. And, and you, you need to know what's happening, say in the Atlantic, before it hits us so that you have time to prepare for an oncoming hurricane or, or a storm um, of any sort. So, and so space-based weather helps you see the full planet. Whereas lots of varying, from, lots yeah. of varying data. So this is, that's, uh, this is great. Uh, and I'm sure much of, much of this data, I know a lot of the weather data uh, is totally free. The imagery is free. We should, uh, you know, we need to get on that <laughs> so everybody can start making their uh, their projects. Um, and I think one little question, I think we had one extra question. I'll just, uh, if you can make it quick, but I know someone wants to know uh, from, uh, where did my question go? Um, from Deerfield Community School, New Hampshire, seventh grade. Uh, how many years of school did you go to be uh, to be a part of NASA? <laughs> well, that's a great question. So sure. I, I um, actually started at NASA through an intern program um, that uh, NASA still runs to this day. And now rather than being the, the student, I'm a mentor in that program. Um, so uh, I actually have two mentors. Uh, they came in to, to our two mentees. They came in at, one came in in high school and one came in in college. Um, uh, and, uh, and so I actually did four years of, um, college. I studied computer engineering and then I went to graduate school and I got my master's, um, at the Johns Hopkins university. Um, and, um, and I, I, it took me three years to do that. Um, and so, uh, a lot, a, a, a lot of people, um, almost everybody, um, that gets their their graduate level work can get some assistance from their um, from their uh, employer, um, mm -hmm. and so NASA, for example, paid a hundred percent of my graduate fees, which helped me a lot because I had to pay my own schooling, um, sure. and college can be expensive. So um, 
so NASA really helped me um, get my degrees. Um, and, Was that the uh, Pathways program that you're talking about, or is that a separate program? Because I know uh, this so is one that. So it, the Pathways program did not exist when I was there. The program was called Co-op program before that. Sure. It was, I started before uh, we had like a web, a way to apply online that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. I had to fill out a form and I mailed out forms to every NASA center to try and get a job. Right. Um, I got one. Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> um, um, all right. Well, that is going to kind of do it for us today. I want to make sure everyone has the resources that they need. Uh, and that two links, where in the world? Uh, the other one is gotinker slash earth art links. Pause if you need to uh, grab those. We are kind of done. This is the last show for the week. Thank you so much to Lori. Uh, I've learned so much. I have you know, project ideas already in mind for, you know, for teachers and educators. So that's, uh, that's great. Uh, but everybody, you can uh, see all of the code labs. Just go to gotinker slash NASA live. Uh, everything's in recording there. There's like 10 different shows this week, I think, something like that. Uh, but uh, thank you so much. Thanks again, uh, Lori Perkins, for your, uh, your wisdom uh, and tutelage. Uh, and thank you, Leandra, for what a great project. Uh, but that's going to do it for us. Thank you, everybody. Take care. All right, we are all done.